Hello, my name is Bianca Bruce. I'm a business and branding strategist. And today I want to talk about company culture. I think the conversation around company culture is always something that comes up when we have been through a period of concentration. Arguably, 2020 has been a period of concentration and companies, teams have changed the way that we work. We are working from home. We feel more disengaged from each other. So company culture has become a conversation on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on blogs and articles to encourage leaders, but also employees and team members to participate in company culture. What it is, is that feeling you create, the atmosphere you create with one another when you engage with one another. It used to be that you walk into a space and by virtue of walking in a space and experiencing it, you got a vibe of what that company was about, what that team is about. Now with remote work, we don't have that opportunity. So you'll have people on Zoom calls changing their background or seeing where they work or getting a peek into their family or, or our home life. And that is all really wonderful. But company culture is more than that. It is the feeling and the atmosphere you have, that connection that you create when you pick up the phone or send a text message, how you respond to an email. It's really about expressing your values. So my encouragement to people who are interested in creating and participating in creating company culture is lead with your why, lead with your value proposition, understand why you are part of the team and how your unique contribution really influences the efficiency of your team and your company. When I think of how company culture can make or break a team, that's a very extreme statement to make. But I would say that company culture is what precedes you. It's the kind of things that people talk about behind your back. You know, are you, what are you known for? Are you known as a problem solver? Are you known as a person who's proactive? Are you known as someone who is a go-getter, wants to say yes? Are you known as an innovator? And I think particularly with work from home, where we pick up the phone and we're surrounded by our personal lives, that integration is so much more important today than it ever has been before because you're more likely to have somebody on the phone, a client, your boss, a team member, and your children are running around. So how you respond to that is influencing the relationship and leaves a taste of your culture in the person's ear and the perception that you are talking to. So it's really important to understand that culture has begun to overlap. Your company's culture isn't just a place where you go to to work. It's now also in your home and your home and personal life is also in the company. So leaders need to be really aware of that and be sensitive to what employees and team members are dealing with personally and professionally. All that influences culture. There are executives and leaders that I get to work with on a, on a daily basis who know that their authenticity is the most important foundational place from which they lead. So, and then their value proposition is all, all different, even within a, the same company. Every leader has their own value prop. There is a mission statement and a value statement that sort of services as an umbrella, but the leader brings their own authentic self to the team. And that influences how the team feels permission but also really an example, sees an example of how important and powerful authenticity is in creating a really positive company culture. Because ultimately, that, that authenticity and that alignment in, in the executive 
then influences the team member, then influences other departments, other vendors, other partners, and ultimately ends up with a client. So your company culture starts somewhere, but it's this incredible ripple effect that you create by showing up as authentic and as true and as integrated as possible. And this is something that great leaders don't just do for themselves. They really challenge their teams and their employees to do that for for themselves so that you have this compound ripple effect and it's it's really beautiful to 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 watch and the the thing that i want to say is that when a when a person does that and when a team and a company is intentional about that they can make a change in their culture rather quickly to the positive i think it's a misconception that company culture takes years and years and years to build it's very true that you can quickly destroy it and quickly undermine it but you can just as effectively and efficiently move it into a new positive uplifting forward thinking direction and and be really really intentional about that I'm sure that there's been reams and reams and reams of of, of papers and books been written on this. So this is my perspective on a few key ingredients for company culture. And here's what I would say to you. It really depends on on the kind of, of company and the kind of product and the kind of service that you are providing. But the most important few elements are these. Know your value proposition and understand if your value proposition has changed, particularly in 2020 and 2021, as we are working through what is happening to our world and our communities. So be be mindful of that. Value proposition is one. And, and ne- never before in, in my career have I seen a need to take the pulse. Do a quick check-in with, with, your, with your team. Do a quick check-in with your clients, your customers. Understand where their starting point is. You can have the same value proposition as a company and a team. You can have the same mission, but taking a quick pulse of where each person is at and authentically listening to their response. This is beyond a quick, how are you doing? Good, fine, great, next. This is an intentional, relational, connective point. Do that a little bit more frequently. And and the other thing I would say is give yourself permission as a as a participant in creating culture to understand that you will never have all of the answers. You can create your own culture, but culture by definition is a participation with other people. That is what company culture, what family culture, what community culture really is about. So Remind yourself that you are a participant, that when you are functioning as a leader, your role is not to dictate, it is to connect, it's to align, it's to integrate, and to pay attention to the conversation that is happening in your team and around you and with your clients. So connecting is the foundation of building a strong culture. This conversation of culture and culture creating is not one that you have at the beginning of a month, the beginning of a year, or when you're just, you know, restructuring a department. This is a conversation you're having every single day. And it's really about that intentionality. So if there's one thing that you can do today, every day, to significantly shape the culture that you're in, in your company, in your team, is to do this. Today, I will show up as fill in the blank. And that fill in the blank is something that is in line with who you are. Today, I will show up as optimistic. Today, I will show up as a problem solver. Today, I will show up as somebody who understands. Today, I will show up with compassion or with empathy. 
Today I will show up with courage. Those are the kinds of things that you can start with. So that one statement, fill in that blank. And if you want to get extra bold and extra courageous, you give yourself some markers underneath. Three things that you know that if those things are, are done, checked off the list, that you know you, ha you will have shown up with as that blink, right? So three ways that I can show up as courageous, three ways that I will be a problem solver, three ways that I will be understanding of my team. How will they know? Those are some very simple things to do and you will be able to see a significant di difference almost immediately. What's fun about culture is that it doesn't take 90 days like other habits. This isn't a workout program that you have to go to the gym for 90 days before you see a difference. This is not like that, which is what makes it so much more fun. Culture is creative. It's like taking a paintbrush with paint on it. So you have blue paint on your paintbrush and you start painting. That's the immediacy of creating and engaging in culture. It doesn't take that long and it doesn't take that much. So give it a try. Thank you so much for watching. And you know what? Comment below. Tell me how you show up in your team, in your company, with your clients, and how you express your company culture. I'd love to hear and learn from you. Thanks, guys.